Hey guys, what is up Dave here? Coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel. As you guys know, sometimes I like to respond to your guys' comments in video form, especially if it's something that I hear often or just some misinformation I see because I know it came from somewhere so more than one person is thinking this way. And the uh, topic of today is about CIE, C Games, Racing Rivals, and Rush Racing 2, which I said I would never make a video about again. Here we are. Um, so this guy just responded to um, my video where I was basically um, trying to ma manipulate the code for Rush Racing and trying all this stuff from Rush Racing 1. So let me read his comment first. And, well, try to. He definitely needs English lesson. Um, I feel bad if he's not English at all or American or anything. So Stupid. Anyway, <laughs> stupid me. So let me read his comment. The reason the, f the reason the first racing rivals took their game off the market is because they went bankrupt, and to be honest, they just want money out of this game and made huge prices on the game that no one gonna do unless you're idiot. And they're no point off hacking this game a a once their exploit they can't fix like last time they will take it off the market and Facebook and everything it's just easier than fixing it to them like rush racing is just another name for racing rivals oh my god there's so much wrong with this post I responded in word form to him specifically but I wanted to make a video because I want to get the truth out there. I want to get the truth out there, at least from what my point of view is, from a lot of the facts that I gathered over time. A lot of people know me from Nitto 1320 Legends, which was a game prior to Racing Rivals for PC that was coded with Adobe Flash. If you don't know, um, on my Discord, there is a user named Sagoza. He's a badass with Unity 3D. He is actually taking a beta client of... Nitto 1320 Legends and converting it to Unity 3D to attempt to bring back Nitto Legends. And he's doing a damn good job. If you want to follow that progress, look at my description for my link to my Discord and you can check the 1320 Legends update section to see his progress. It's amazing. I love it. I, I love what he's doing. I love trying to help when I have time. Um and it's just overall really awesome. But let's let's dive in here. So the reason the first race rivals took their game off market was because they went bankrupt. False. Very false. So the reason racing rivals um, went away is because they shut down. Racing rivals itself, I guess you could say, went quote unquote bankrupt. Um, not necessarily, not really. So Racing Rivals had a very long history. So let me start with Nitto 1320 Legends to give you, or actually, I'll start with Nitto 555R. I'm going to give you guys the entire timeline. Oh, this is going to be a long video, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to give you guys the entire timeline. So Choice, Choice Enterprise or Choice Internet, I think is what it was called back in the late 90s, like 97, 98, 99, came out with a game called Nitto 555R. Nitto 555R was a flash-based drag racing game over the internet that was multiplayer. A lot of the game was client-side coded. Some people figured out way back in the day how to get into that code, manipulated the code, hacked the game, basically, and made it completely unfair for everyone. And that game lasted from like 98 to 2001 or 2002. Uh, 2001 or 2002, I don't remember exactly, a game called Nitto 1320 Challenge released to the public from the same people. Um, but at this point, I believe they had already changed their name to uh, C Games or C Studios. The game was much better coded. Um, a lot more of the game was server-sided. There were still exploits for the game with things like Cheat Engine early on. Um, but the game was way more fair, a lot more features, and... There is someone attempting to remake the server on my Discord. Link in the description down below. Uh, at product plugging. Um, so anyway, somebody was attempting to recreate, or someone was, or they were creating Nitto 1320 Challenge 
ran it until about 2007, and I believe late 2005, sometime 2006, there was a hacked version of Nitto 1320 Challenge that released to the public. It was called Nitto 1320 Apocalypse, created by a member of the community, I believe, named Jeff. Jeff B68 is what I believe his name was. Um, he created the client with a few other people using a lot of the same methods we've actually used to recreate Nitto 1320 let, uh, Challenge, uh, their server right now. Um, it's It was very cool. Uh, it had a lot of automated systems built right into the game client. They had found a bunch of exploits with like abusing mod tools and banning everyone in the game, including admins. <laughs> They, they kind of did a number. And then they put out tutorials on how to make your own hacked version of the game. Um, so then Nitto Ditto released, Nitto Revolution released, Nitto Prostitution re released, VTech and Fifth released. It was kind of a nightmare. Um, the files were actually directly hosted on Cheat Engine's website. If you actually go to archive.org, you can find the original links to the original files for Nitto 1320 APOC. Um, although the APOC download doesn't work, uh, the FLA file does, which is amazing. And I just remembered that, so I need to tell a certain person need to tell about that. But anyway, so they got everything working as far as like a hacked client, and that kind of just utterly destroyed Nitto 1320 Challenge. But they were already working on Nitto 1320 Legends. They probably started it somewhere early in 2006, maybe late 2005, because of how long game development takes. One single person created the entire private beta of Nitto 1320 Legends by themselves to attempt to defeat the hackers, because they kind of just took it on themselves, like, hey, this is my challenge, I need to beat the hackers. And when Legends first came out, um, for the private beta, there were some exploits, uh, that carried over from challenge but the people who hacked challenge i believe from what i was told i could be wrong about this from what i was told actually did help the admin team patching up those exploits to keep race uh nitto 1320 legends safe so nitto 1320 legends released in 2007 to the public uh <clears throat> and was a great game for many years from 2007 all the way until i believe Either 2012 or 2014. It was one of those two years. Oh, just 2014. So I'll get to why those two numbers are important in a minute. So um, Jeff B68 didn't do hardly any hacking on Nitto 1320 Legends. Uh, it just didn't. I, I don't remember the reasoning behind it. I believe there was like threats of lawsuits against him or something. I don't know the truth on all that stuff. I just know he didn't do anything on. Very early on, there were people doing things like uninstalling certain parts from the car you shouldn't be able to uninstall, but it was very, very, very hush, hush, hush. Nobody knew these exploits existed until about July 2012. And that's where I came in and where I started to build my fame in the Nitto community. <laughs> so, um... I accidentally cracked the client in a very similar way to Jeff for 1320 Challenge. Um, and very much, and definitely went ham. Let's put it that way. I went ham. At first, so by this point, they were kind of already done adding features to Nitto Legends. They weren't really releasing new things. They were just giving us cars like once a month or once a week. And that was it. That was all they, they were really doing. And every so often, they'd give us a client update with bug fixes and maybe a new small feature or something like that. Um, but there was never anything that was huge, really, as of like 2012, is when really the big stuff kind of stopped. It was mid-2012, very, very 12, is when all that big update stopped for features and things like that. We started to get only cars. So... At first, my additions to 1320 Legends were very safe. They were very harmless. Um, one of the things on Legends... That oh, I don't have hard drive. Ooh. I don't know if it's in the car or what. But 
Uh, oh, I have some stuff right here. So, I have a way to show Damn it. So, in Nidda Legends, let me see if I can find screenshots, because that'll be fun. Instead of just staring at that guy's comment. So, in your home, for example, on Nidda Legends, which I don't think I'm finding in the area. Yeah, not easily. Um, but things started happening. So, like, at first, in the home area, you you were able to control the color of the background of your home and what other people could see. So, when they would pull up your account like this and what was called the viewer, on the profile tab, the background would be different colors. So, like, as you can see on this guy, XBMWX, his background was red. Well, on this guy's account, yes, it's very small, but you can see that it's pink. Or I'm sure there's other photos like this guy's. It's gray, so that color was a, had the ability to be customized. But it was much. It was set up very much like uh, paint uh, paint swabs or something like that. Uh, paint swatches, the little things you can click on. Just saw them there. It was very much set up like this in a sense. It was a little color palette with ver with certain colors pre selected. And you would be able to click those, and that was the background color. The very, very first modification for Nidda Legends that I made that worked was the ability to do a wide range of colors. I got a color spectrum that went from black all the way to white, and it had every color in between. So you could go in and any color you wanted. Well, as my knowledge grew with Adobe Flash... I started getting more curious, and stuff like this showed up. What this is, is it was a custom version of the uh, Legends interface, and I was able to control like which wheel loaded on the car. I was able to control the size of the wheel. I was able to control the tire profile. I was able to control the paint color all before you bought it. Now, that didn't actually work. If you tried to buy that car, it didn't work. Um, it would give you an error that those wheels and stuff weren't available, but we were stealing parts from other cars. We were doing engine swaps that were illegal, we were doing part swaps that were illegal. We were doing a whole bunch of other exploits, money bugs, point bugs, which were the same as gems. And and already at this point, that was late 2012, I was doing stuff like that is when I started doing that. So late 2012 through 2013 into 2014, they were already probably working on Racing Rivals. It takes a long time to make a game, even a private beta. I remember it was, I believe, November of 2013. The private beta, well, location beta of Racing Rivals released for iOS. Um, I had a spare iPhone 5 at the time that I got somehow. I don't remember. It was jailbroken. Um, I was able to change my location, create a... Um, create an iTunes account that was in the correct country to play Racing Rivals. And I went through, I played Racing Rivals on iOS, like the day it came out for private beta slash location-based beta, it was fun. So Racing Rivals was going to be a hit, we all knew it. It was very popular for people to make fake iTunes accounts just to get that beta. That's what I believe convinced CIE, let's go Racing Rivals. It's a full, full-on go, let's go, it's going to be a good project, it's going to be a good game. And definitely it made them a lot of money. I remember people telling me that there used to be a way to see their monthly profits for uh, Nidda Legends or Racing Rivals. And yeah, uh, they were making a good chunk of change when the game came out. Now, um, the time when it released on Android, let me see... So when it released on Android in 20... or when it released on iOS public completely... Uh, in 2014, they shut down Racing Rivals almost immediately because the game wasn't worth holding up for them because it wasn't making them any money. Um, the hacks were abundant. And Racing Rivals was going to be a bigger hit. And Nidda Legends was already dead, basically, to them because there wasn't anything more they could do with it. So Racing Rivals released November 2012... or 2014... Originally looking, God, this is awesome. This, this is some classic shit, right? Looking like this. Um, that's what Racing Rivals looked like. It was 
a huge hit, like nearly instantly. Everybody wanted to play it. We were all playing it, and we ended up, you know, having so much fun with the game. Well, so, you know, there was no reason to keep the game running. Well, come like 2015, when it came to Android, we started to realize, oh, we can hack this the same way we did for Legends. And ya boy, God rest my soul. Please don't, actually. Let me go to hell. Uh, I cracked into it. I did what I do. Made auto launch. Auto NOS. Found a way to force paint cars, which... That's an example of a force paint, I believe. Oh, okay, I need to check out this guy's website. Um, I found a way to do what was called force paint. I didn't name it. I called it inventory painting. It was called force paint. Uh, I wonder if I can actually... Force paint. There were certain cars... Here's a great example. So, as you can see, this car is matte blue. I believe the RWB was not possible to do a vinyl wrap on that would change the color in the inventory if you got a matte paint from um, the like crates in the game. So that's a good example of one of the features that I found. And let me tell you, that feature was only possible if you bought gems. There were people buying my APK hack, then going and buying the, uh, buying gems by the thousands, basically, because they would make their money back doing these forced paints and then selling the cars. Dumbass me should have done that. But I didn't because, like, releasing things. So Racing Rivals was making big bucks. Racing Rivals was huge. It was a very good game, but CIE, I think, maybe started to realize, what is this? Drag Racing Rivals for the Switch? We'll look at that in a minute. Um, I think something along the lines of, like, CIE was maybe realizing the game was bigger than them is what I believe actually happened for why Glue Mobile ended up coming in and merging with CIE. I think that's what happened. C Games merged with Blue Mobile because the game was getting too big and they couldn't handle it. They didn't have the manpower. They didn't have the muscle. The game was making money hand over fist, but they needed help. So they sold all of their assets in the entire gaming division to Blue Mobile. Blue Mobile took over Racing Rivals. Initially, they hired some of uh, the Racing Rivals staff. And racing rivals developers and had them working on the game well for some odd reason at some point i believe i was told they were pulled off the project and put on a new one that had nothing to do with even like racing which is what their expertise was because that's what they were primarily working on for games for the last probably 10 years um they ended up working on another game and they decided to outsource the creation of racing rivals racing rivals ended up getting outsourced to what a company was called was Carbonated. And this is what they basically turned Racing Rivals into. It was not well received by the community. Many members left, not only because of a lot of the hacks that were introduced, because people were cheating hand over fist, whether it was using Game Guardian and speed hacks, or they were finding a glitch to duplicate cards, or they were finding a glitch to... um like force a player to lose their race no matter what and they would just lose their car there were a lot of glitches a lot of hiccups and a lot of problems with racing rivals that probably could have been fixed had the money been there to allocate for the game but there wasn't enough coming in anymore because too many people were leaving quickly a lot of people will hold a crutch up and say Hacking killed Nitto 1320. No, the existence of smartphones and racing rivals killed Nitto 1320. Nitto 1320 Legends was dead as soon as around sometime mid 12, late 20. Racing rivals was 
equivalent to probably a 60 year old woman or man. I don't know why I had to give it a sex. Uh, Racing Rivals was equivalent to a 60 year old person. And then by 2014, that 60 year old person was actually more like 135 (laughs) and already basically in the ground. Um, Hacking did have a lot to do with it, but Racing Rivals was already out. It was already making more money than Nidal Legends was. And there was no point in keeping Legends running. Then, Racing Rivals comes out. Same thing happens to Rivals. It gets outsourced for development. The update's not well taken by the community. The community fights back with not spending money. The best way to fight back with anything is speak with your wallet. If money starts to impact people, look at the GameStop stuff that's been going on lately. When money starts to impact people, that's how you know you've got your point across because they will either bend at the knee finally and be like, okay, what do you want? Or you'll lose out on something potentially that was a good thing. So the good thing, Racing Rivals, the only good thing is RR storage. As you can see, I have a storage for Racing Rivals, FB client and asset server. This asset server file is gigantic. But as far, oh yeah, on point of this guy's comment. Um, sorry. Basically saying that Racing Rivals went bankrupt is false. Racing Rivals itself as a game just stopped making money, but CIE did not go bankrupt. CIE game, C Games and C Studio were basically the same thing. They were basically the same company. C Studio still exists. C Games was the one that was bought out. C Studio makes uh, software for companies and hospital equipment and stuff like that. And they're doing very well. But, unfortunately, C Games got bought out by Glue Mobile. And I do not believe that uh, CIE was going bankrupt. I believe that it was just getting bigger than them. And they couldn't handle it anymore. So they found a buyer, buyer bought, and that was it. And then C, uh, Racing Rivals wasn't making enough money, game closed. Let's talk Rush Racing. Rush Racing 1's history. Rush Racing 1 came out while Racing Rivals still existed, uh, like 2017, I want to say. It was a clone, HTML5 based game, WebGL clone on a custom game engine from what i could tell of racing rivals everything was exactly the same as racing rivals part names car names the way the game looked the way the cars raced, the way the gauges looked even right down to that little storyline that was available in racing rivals through campaign mode whenever an ai would talk to you basically everything was exactly the same word for word the storyline was the same for campaign. The game was identical. The problem with Rush Racing was a lot of the HTML5 was very much editable with just inspect element. You could buy rims that weren't available. You could buy paint jobs that weren't available. The security was god awful on Rush Racing 1. And instead of you know fixing it while the game was running, they took the game down. Didn't tell people any reason of why or give anybody a heads up as to why the game was suddenly gone they just took the game down people reached out tried to buy the game from them but actually apparently what was happening we didn't know this until very recently let's see when was this video february 20 so about a year ago is when we found out that they took rush racing down in favor of modifying it removing a lot of the racing rivals elements changing it in such a way that um, it was their own game, but it was like a fan recreation. They fixed all the exploits. They claim that the game runs on blockchain technology. They claim the game is unhackable. The game is not unhackable. There are people right now with modified source code of the game loading it into the game and basically running their version of Nitto Apoc on Rush Racing 2. Rush Racing 2 is nothing more than just a heavily patched version of the basic hacks of Rush Racing. Rush Racing 2 is very much exploitable. Bots work, but they've done a lot of stupid things on Rush Racing 1 to try to stop hackers. 
On top of that, their apps for playing the game are nothing more than tutorial followed web browsers to load the game up. The game on mobile is god awful. It lags, it's not optimized for good use, even though they were telling people for multiple months while they were waiting for the Android version that, oh, it's in beta testing, we're optimizing it for several different devices. It's very difficult, there's many devices. They were not optimizing crap. Don't. The developers of Rush Racing 2 are garbage people that lie to their community and make themselves sound better than they are. All they did was basically have a fan-made project. The game does not run on blockchain. There is proof from an exploit of early days of Rush Racing 2 that is a simple MySQL backend um, running a MariaDB uh, you know, SQL database. That's all the game is. There is nothing to this game that is quote-unquote blockchain. Don't listen to their lies. Rush Racing 2 is a garbage game. It's awful to even compare it to Racing Rivals. Racing Rivals was a good game. But, long story short, if you made it this far into the video, let me know what you had for breakfast. Let me know also if you have a Valentine. You want me to set up a Valentine's Day section on Discord for the holiday? Do you want me to create holiday-based sections on the Discord where you all can go in and talk? About the holiday and stuff like that and then it disappears after the holiday like a day or two after that holiday and we add in the next holiday and you know give me your feedback i don't know how many people are going to actually watch this video because of all this stupid stuff going on with youtube when it comes to how the community tab is suddenly being i am gaining subscribers hand over fist because i'm using the community tab thanks to the spiffing brit honestly <laughs> but long story short c games re replaced their games with updated versions every um, four to seven years. It was just a thing. C Games didn't go bankrupt. They just had the, uh, you know, they just probably got, they merged, basically, I think is the right term when it comes to businesses uh, joining forces. I believe that they actually just merged, but again, that's a theory, a game theory. Um, <laughs> I had to. I couldn't, re I couldn't resist. And then Racing Rivals just wasn't making money because the community wasn't happy with how the game was set up and how the updates were being handled and how Glue was handling it. Um, Glue Mobile also had a second game that everybody really, really wanted, and they never released it public. They released it on location-based beta and then pulled it, and nobody ever saw it again. Car Town Racing. You know what Car Town was. Let me know if you want the story on Car Town and why it shut down. It's a, very, it's a much shorter video. I promise. Um, and what happened with Car Town, why Miniclip was suddenly involved. Uh, if you guys remember that old Flash game, let me know if you want a video on that. I'll talk to you guys later. This was a fun video to make because I know a lot about the Nitto history. I became kind of the Nitto buff when it comes to Legends and Racing Rivals by accident. And I like sharing this knowledge. I love talking about the Nitto games. I love talking about Racing Rivals. And anything that's like it. So... I hope you guys had an awesome day. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll talk to you guys later. I didn't mean to open DN Spy. I told you this would be a long video. We're almost at 30 minutes. Do I just sit here and wait? Start doing things normal. Yeah, the storage. You know, I have all this. This file's gigantic. You don't want it. You know how to see the size. It is gigantic. Even like, believe me if you want. You gotta waste another 55, 52, 1 zero seconds. What's your day today? You have a Valentine? Are you a cool person? you do for fun is this therapy time am i stealing something from davy 504 i used to go to a therapist he was a nice guy really old though a lot of help honestly if you want you know a little bit of structure in your life and you feel like you need a little bit of help seriously just talk to somebody it helps if someone's willing to listen and give you feedback talk to them whether you have to pay it or not it's fun it helps you know this is how bored I get. Just wasting seconds. You don't need to still be watching the video. If you're still watching the video, 
Let me know your favorite color in the in the uh, comments down below because no one's going to make it this far. Bye.